Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode on Mind Your Soul. And today's guest is Grace or Gracie. And we've been following each other for a while on Instagram. Um, her content is amazing. And I, I basically think you're an inspiration, Grace. And she's also a book author, a yoga teacher. And yeah, please introduce yourself to our listeners. Hi there. Thanks for having me, Farah. It's so nice. Yeah, so my name is Grace, or Gracie is my nickname, and I've written two self-help books. I'm a yoga teacher and a well-being coach, but actually, since being in the mental clinic, I changed my career, and I'm now a kindergarten teacher. All in one. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. That is like, wow. Okay. So I now that you said this introduction, I think we need more from you like uh, a bit a bit of a tea uh, l- like your Brits likes to call it <laughs> spill the tea on you said you've spill been through tea, a lot of mental challenges yeah, spill the tea you said you've been through some mental challenges and you used to be yeah in the space of also helping people and maybe in in similar situations so how come you left that was it like what happened and since you chose to become a, a preschool teacher today Yeah, well, ironically enough, like we were just kind of talking about before, I would say I burnt myself out being self-employed. I'd moved to Berlin. I was on top of the world. I thought I could do anything I want, which you can, but little by little. And I think I just kind of pushed myself all into it and didn't really realize the financial stress of it too, moving to a new city being a coach, a yoga teacher, a writer, and all at once, it kind of, yeah, and not having somewhere to live for longer than a few months, because that's just Berlin, and like, balancing also a relationship that then failed, and my parents' relationship failed, and then everything kind of just like, yeah. Okay, yeah, it blew <laughs> up, basically. everything blew up, and that's a lot of, okay, so that is a lot of changes, like, change is good, I always talk about this on my page, and that people should be more risk takers and take more like ch- like make changes if they're a miserable situation. Yeah. But that yeah. is a lot of like like the way you just said it. That was like a lot of change at once, and the brain cannot keep yeah. up with that. That's like impossible. Exactly. Things will deteriorate basically. Um, so yeah. that is what happened. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I definitely that. agree. I feel like it's like I totally agree. The fact that we embrace change and step outside of our comfort zone because I've always been about that and I've always been bold and you know being able to believe in myself so much that I can do something which I think I can it was just like I wasn't looking after my own mental health funnily enough through that um yeah which kind of then led to a breakdown and then moving out of Berlin and starting afresh and I always kind of just had like a a passion for working with children and um yeah went to that (laughs) yeah that sounds healthy I mean if we love to work with children but that is also like a tough environment to be in yeah that's true I was just thinking that when I said it it's not as if it's like (laughs) chill you didn't like become like an accountant or whatever working behind a desk like hiding yourself you know what I'm saying that's like also like putting out all of your energy out there with small humans uh depending on you I I think that is the toughest field to be in as, as a single mother of three I don't know how you do this but like I could not do it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah you feel me then I mean you know me like I am very fueled by passion and I've always yeah, been good. like that to, to the point where like I know that I'm never going to be in an office job and just be yeah. sat at a desk like that for me isn't fueling my passion and I've always wanted to help people that's just like my main goal like help people find peace yeah. become better and yeah. what better than the generation of tomorrow like I mean I see children today and I'm like whoa <laughs> I'm scared oh, about yeah. the future in a you way, you know. Like, yeah, I think as parents, we could all use some tools, but it's always difficult, more difficult to deal with your own kids than others' kids. Like this is how I always felt it. Like it's easier to deal with because it's on a distance, and when it's your own kids, it's like everything you get triggered, right? And you get triggered basically yeah. by your kids. Yeah. Uh, wow, that is impressive. Um, you're doing all of this and tell me about your books you said you wrote two self-help books uh when you were in that space of being a mental well-being coach I guess this is something I'm presuming yeah 
Yeah, well, actually, I wrote my first ebook, Spring 2020, when Corona. Um, oh, yeah. Much yeah, needed. Yeah, kind of came. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I mean, I was kind of, it was a whole like <laughs> reflection of emotions on paper and how I can find peace with other people, like bringing that whole connection towards um let's use this time as a time to focus on ourselves and focus on the better well-being of our world and that was basically then just yeah what spurred me on to write spring 2020 and it's also an audio book that I then recorded but my big book chill out and cheer up um was oh. actually already I already wrote it in 2017 when I was living in Sevilla in Spain at my most yeah epitome in my life just so happy and free and um then it was just always there on the back burner like is there going to be a right time you know that feeling where you're like oh when is the and right time no to right publish time. this <laughs> there's never a right time and I was literally in a mental clinic yeah. <laughs> and, oh my god yeah and it was in 2021 then finally I was like in the mental clinic and I met an artist and then I was like to her hey you, I've always wanted art in my book that's why it's one of the the reasons why I was procrastinating in publishing it and she was wow. like yeah why don't I do it for you and then uh, let me just show you like you know she just did these small oh, little like beautiful. drawings for every chapter and I was like wow this is the kick that I've needed I wasn't in the most <laughs> the best frame of mind at that time but like you just said when is the right time I just wrote my introduction in the mental clinic and I was like now at my weakest that is, power I'm ready. <laughs> that is like a power mindset and today we're going to talk about the power of practicing yoga and that's basically Yay. Why hey. mm -hmm. so tell me about yoga why yoga what does it do to our brain like what what it what is practicing yoga has the effect on the brain basically yeah, I mean, it's kind of like your neuro walks. Um, I would say it doesn't take so long for it to reboost your mind and your functioning. But it also is just so like mindful. It's a time for yourself to really like tune in with your breath and your movement and nothing else. And I think with that, I've always found yoga as a way to come back to myself yeah. and to just stop and notice because I feel like we're always so hectic hectic and I'm always kind of like the person like oh chill out cheer up haha <laughs> my book <laughs> um and that's why I feel like yoga just suits me so well because when I get on the mat I'm really like now is my time I can let go like you know permitting yourself to breathe and move and magically brighten up yourself for the day ahead or for the evening whatever time of day it may be but I I found yoga wow that's actually crazy nearly 10 years ago so nine years ago when I was at the start of uni yeah um on YouTube and then I went to India to do my teacher training in oh, 2018 you went to the root <laughs> I went to the root. I, I just knew it. I had to. I was like, I have to know. So I went to oh, the capital curious. of yoga where, yeah. You have to go all in. Yeah, all time. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was great. I, I mean, that. since you then. Teach yoga, right? You teach Sorry? yoga as well, right? You teach yoga I do. as well, right? Yeah. I've yeah. been teaching since 2018, since I got the degree oh, wow. and um now I'm teaching it outside again uh here in Stuttgart oh, which lovely. I love uh, honestly Farah it's the best experience just doing so yoga I, outside yeah I know I used to do yoga in my 20s and I don't know what happened then I went away from it but now that I do it I do mm -hmm. I do like okay, I'm not gonna lie I, do, I don't do it regularly I don't like it's a habit which I want to incorporate I do it like maybe five ten minutes here and there but every time I do it it's like my soul finds more peace like it's so peaceful it's so peaceful yeah, um i meditate a lot as we talked about i pray a lot i do manifestations and i do the neuro walks and i exercise like strength training tough one and i go running so i do a lot but i think yoga is like a total different like you cannot compare that it's like yeah you're tuning in with yourself and your breath work i think that is very important um, yeah exactly. it's having that moment it's just like meditation basically and prayer and mindfulness um yeah 
So I want to incorporate it. It's just like about a habit thing for me, like where to put it. <laughs> so yeah. No, I totally get it. I mean, especially if you're so active in like other parts of your life and you have like your sports and your walks. But like you said, like literally some like I do yoga every day, not now because I'm like feeling not well. But um, yeah. besides that, every morning, I it's the first thing I do when I wake up um, and I it's kind of got into thing, that basically. habit. Yeah, so everyone can basically, it's a habit thing, just like I do all the other things. So it's basically incorporating that healthy habit. And I do believe yeah. like doing yoga, like, like it's good for you, not only your body, but it's like so many brain benefits, like your focus gets better, you know, your memory yeah. gets like more enhanced. So there are so many brain benefits of doing yoga. So like, it should be like obligatory to do it. Like something we should be I taught, feel like, you. right? Right? Yeah, because it also allows you to be emotionally resistant as well. And like, or no, resilient, sorry. Like, yeah. you're able to kind of not get angry in, you know, irrational moments, like in that sense with the brain and the triggers. And you're allowed, you, like, it allows you to just kind of like reflect before you react. Like, I definitely feel like it's really made me more mindful in certain situations and very like introspective like I just reflect on everything now and I may I'm guessing yoga has been a tool in that <laughs> definitely that was actually my next question like um if you knew about the neurobiological mechanisms how like how yoga kind of reduces stress and anxiety in the brain so basically what is happening is that um, the neurotransmitters like gamma uh, which is it's like a neural activity going on in the brain it's kind of mm -hmm. calming your nervous system down so it does like impact many areas of the brain um and the cortisol levels go down which are very much heightened mm -hmm. during stress and anxiety so it's like decreasing your body's stress levels by doing stretching your body like with those exercises basically so it is kind of calming the nerve nervous system down and and getting you into like the relaxed state instead of you being alerted um so that's like a huge reason for doing it right <laughs> like right you feel I feel you um, yeah yeah but again I, I would like to know like um so how much yoga are you supposed to do like is five ten minutes enough for me or do we have to like do specific time for yoga before it kicks in like with lowering my cortisol or you know do you know that yeah that's a good question I feel like every other thing too it's a personal thing like okay. it depends on like how mindful you are as a person or how stressed you are as a person because I've noticed with my students in my class the mind's racing especially when I do evening classes I can just tell that people can't calm down and not think of anything and it's so funny you say that because the other day I was like you know I'm like when I'm just introducing us like going into the breathing to um activate the parasympathetic system I'm like yeah. just focus on your breath forget about what you're gonna eat later and my student <laughs> comes up to me like and she's like I was actually thinking about what I was gonna eat how did you know and I was like it's all our thoughts it's all our thoughts <laughs> if you're hungry so, that doesn't yeah. activate it right hunger is a big big response so if we're hungry, you cannot focus on anything else, just so you know. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. But it also is one of those things, futuristic. Like, we're always focused yeah. on the future. We're always focused on yeah. what is Instead coming of being next. in the present moment. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that is why I can't really answer that question, because it really depends on how you are present as a person, how guess, much yoga yeah. you need, let's say, to activate that kind of, like, mindfulness. Because mm -hmm. I've... Yeah, I've noticed with some people, with some students, they're like really like focused and into it, but others it's like so much harder because they've had a really, like you were saying, stressful day at work and they're just thinking of like things that they have to do or tasks that were not completed and stuff. So I think it definitely is like start little, like of course, I don't say like just go and do half an hour of yoga every day. Like I always um, say with everything, small steps lead to better yeah. um, outcomes. That's what right? I always say like, is basically what this book is saying, right? Atomic ah, habits. yeah, I've heard of that. <laughs> like, like start with yeah. something achievable, not something that is difficult, and then build up the steps, you know. Um, exactly yeah, yeah. and yeah. five minutes of yoga can still be pure magic like I know it sounds funny but like even in the morning if I don't have enough time and I just do 10 minutes of stretching and breathing 
it's like a cup of coffee for me like I'm just like yeah I know I know same <laughs> same it's like a complete, yeah so I I meditate between um clients or do breath work or do something mm-hmm. or move my body because I need that I need those breaks to like be ready right. for that next energy that I'm engaging with so I, I yeah. do that. Um, so I just think it's a habit. Actually, I could I could easily do 10 minutes between sessions like of yoga. I could. Um, so it's just like a habit thing for me, I think, to implement and I could do it. I yeah. So that, yeah. that's like no excuse. I should do it. I will try it out tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but girl, I feel you there. And that's why we should take out the should. The should is the worst word ever that we can. I know. Because it creates so creates much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> hear myself right I could actually hear no, but I feel you like, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes we're both in the field but it still happens we're only human <laughs> it happens and I'm helping clients with this it's like you take action today now yeah no excuse I'm gonna do it today um when I'm done working when I'm when it's me time yeah before I sleep I think that'll be nice for me yeah, but that's the great thing about yoga. It's great before you sleep, when you wake yeah, up, during the day, any time of day. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I actually used to do it before, before bedtime, because that was I was in a good routine, I guess. Um, yeah, I was doing it in a gym, like in a class during the day. And then I sometimes did it like in the evenings after a tough work day. And I was like, that just relaxed me so much, you know. Um, but yeah. because I have a, like a job like this where I stand or sit a lot, in front of a computer I always feel like I want to move my body so I'm always like running or working out or you know yeah so I want to like because I'm already so still in my work day and we're not supposed to stand still sit still all day long we're supposed to move our body right so exactly and that's why we have so many problems in our society (laughs) yeah that's why like we're not supposed we're supposed to like be moving around all the time and as a preschool teacher you do that but I don't <laughs> so yes it's tiring but I have to say I wouldn't change it for a thing I'm way more like active than I used to be in that sense and I surprise myself how sporty I can be with the kids I'm like yes <laughs> no, like 24 7 with kids like you have to be ready and yeah yeah a lot of energy um but in that way it's I've also done it with the kids like yoga and they love doing yes. like breath work with, with the animals people. and it's yes. so fun I love it. So there are yoga for kids on youtube as well and I've done it several times with my kids and uh, like oh, a fun nice. family activity yeah they love it so my kids they do breath work they journal they do meditation because I'm their mother right Amazing. so it's like before bedtime, like they're journaling their emotions. The girls are uh, a oh. bit older than my small son, but it's like they're doing all of this because it's a lifestyle. Okay, this is what I'm teaching my clients as well. This is a lifestyle. So if you like, you need to have the base foundation. So if you have the base foundation in your life, then I, I would say whatever challenges will be thrown at you, you'll be better to handle them because you yeah. have the base foundation of doing your mindset work. And because they don't teach this in schools in Denmark, which I think is really sad, breath work, mindfulness to kids, yoga to kids, like they do exercises with them and they go to their sports and stuff, but no one teaches them this. And I think it's important to change this in the society, you know. Um, Yeah, I agree. I feel like also in Germany here, it's not on the curriculum. I mean, where is it on the curriculum? In Denmark, they don't do it. You can join classes for kids that, that can do it. Like you can you can do that or you can teach them at home because society is not doing it. Um, yeah. So you kind of have to change. And then when they do all of those things, when they're also like putting out so much energy, interacting with other kids, it's overwhelming for them, right? Of course, and some, yeah. And sometimes, as you know, the kids get so overwhelmed, they cannot express themselves and they just burst out or become angry. And I'm always like, what is behind this? emotion like what is behind your emotion and and then sometimes it's just like small things or they don't even know and then they can journal it and then they're like oh I figured it out or they can do breath work before talking to me and then they're calmed down and I can understand them so I think that is important right otherwise Mm -hmm. how are we communicating (laughs) um so I I think this should be obligatory like the yoga in schools like they do have gymnastics they do have sports 
they don't have yoga, weird. They don't have breath work, and we all take our breaths all the time, right? <laughs> so exactly. It's like, yeah, yeah no, I agree. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> that should be like the first things children should be introduced to in school um, because they are facing so many things growing up, you know. And um, yeah, and now also technology on top of everything, like oh it's so God, hard yeah. for them to handle, like you know, so many yeah. impressions. Glad I'm not from that time, but I don't know how, like my kids don't have phones yet, even though my daughter is soon 12, she doesn't have a phone, okay. I don't have phone. I know, it's so weird, she thinks we're like a weird family. <laughs> 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 um, but, but neuroscience research actually shows that kids should not be on social media until they're like 13, 14, and that okay. they should be educated on it. It's not good for their brain development. So kids' brain are developing. So. Yeah. Kids Brains are developing till they're 25, okay? And right, and when they're until they're seven, is going with speed their brain development, okay? So their okay. tissue is very soft, everything. So when they're when when they are seven till they're teenager, it's like a different state of development. So a lot of things are happening, and it's actually self harming them with social media, a lot, lot of phone screen time. O obviously, they have laptops. It's not like they cannot communicate with their friends or anything. And they borrow my phone. But I'm just saying, like, it's harmful for them to be around yeah, that much. Yeah. To um, so the old way is actually the good way, you know, the books and paper I agree. writing. Yeah, and being yeah. outside more in nature. We're, like, losing our connection with nature. And I feel like, yeah, nature and connection are two chapters in my book. And I just feel like, those really are two key parts of our lives to yeah. be in a good frame of mind that we're kind of forgetting because of everything else that's coming in the way. I mean, I can't blame us in a way because we're in a society that's like, you know, really on the go and we're like um, developing at such high rates that we, we're like you know as adults like I sometimes find it hard to keep up and then I'm like wow what about the children you know and no then yeah it's a shame but like it can be so simple if you think about it just go outside in the nature and have fun in the mud <laughs> I, so I actually think because I do the neuro walks I could do yoga in nature because that is my thing like I like to be outside of my working space when I'm on my yeah. break basically so I think now that is summer I have no excuses even in winter I, I did go running like in minus 15 I'm crazy I did get sick a lot I'm not gonna lie but wow. <laughs> I did <laughs> I and my followers were like like DMing me like you're crazy and you're gonna get sick and I'm like yeah probably and I did but I still kept going I was like I need to get outside I cannot do this you know crazy like, yeah but I, I feel mean, you yeah, for everything like if you live in those countries but I'm just saying, like, there are no excuses. If you want to, like, longevity, if you want to live longer, yoga is also prone to increase longevity. And that's part of it, right? Because we're working on everything, the mind-body connection. And every yeah. time with that, we just get more peace up here. And automatically, our body, like, I don't know, inflammation or you have some pain, whatever, it's all, like, related. It just becomes better, improves, you know? Yeah, um, but it can be as simple as grounding. I don't know if you know the technique. It's basically just going on the in the grass with bare feet, which I try and do as much as I can. Not every day. I mean, I don't have a garden, but like I do it on the weekends for sure. And it's even been proven like only 10 minutes of grounding reduces your inflammation, like you just said, reduces stress, um, you know, risk of heart disease, all of these diseases that we're actually getting through the food that we're consuming, that we have no idea what's in it. And the more I'm becoming mindful of that, the more I'm like, wow, like it can be as simple as connecting back with nature and just putting your bare feet on the ground because we're not used to this it was only in the 80s if you think about it that that shoes were oh like God, this big <laughs> I know. that was the 70s um the 80s i'm the 80s kid so i don't know i was the kid so i was bare feet anyway but because i was the kid <laughs> No, that's the thing that I help my clients with. It's like to, to relive again. They feel like they're stuck in life. They're living on autopilot. And my goal is actually yeah. for them to, to live by their purpose, but finding the passion again that ignite that fire within them. 
like I always ask them, what did you like to do as a kid? And then it's like, That's I love nice. to ride a horse. I love to paint. I love to play badminton. It's like, why are you not doing it now? I don't yeah, know, yeah. life. Okay. Don't have time. Not having no, enough time is always all the, time. the biggest then, excuse. Yeah, then I, <laughs> and they're like binge watching Netflix. And it's like, oh, you have four hours for yourself. And then they're like, what? They're like, yeah, so you were scrolling for two hours, two hours TV. You have the time to pursue a hobby. And then they're like, oh, shit. Like, it's like they blind you, <laughs> like, right? So, yeah. yeah. And when they start to do their old passions again and change some of their bad habits, it's like they start to live again. We should yeah. all be living like this, basically. Yeah, basically reigniting your child inside of you and treating your child. Like, within just, just run around like grab their feet, and we're like, oh, I don't feel like it. My feet will get dirty. And <laughs> well, like, we care too much about what people think, too. Like, who cares? Just live your life. Sometimes I'm like, you know, I say it, and then I like realize when people look at me, they're like, oh, huh, you're crazy, you know? And I'm like, yeah, wait, no, you yeah, really care about people. what people think? <laughs> like, yeah. just stop. Just stop when caring. Point, yeah, when you get to that point, you don't care anymore that is when the magic happens that was for yeah, me five true. years ago that is where the transformation is like everything shifts then you're just living authentically and this is something i help my yeah. clients with too because they struggle with like being themselves they're embarrassed by their hobbies sometimes or they're like they don't feel like they're enough so we work with limiting beliefs self-confidence you know the people pleasing get rid of that I used to be all of those things like I was people pleasing but I was like killing my soul in the process I was not being true to myself so then you're not really living right you're living like a fake person and you're doing this to yourself like you put yourself in that situation so I got myself out of it and um, so everybody can change the things around we're not supposed to be that serious all the time and we are supposed to do good things to our soul like yoga mindfulness grounding uh breath work like all of those things are good for our mind and body and we feel happier lighter and thus we live longer because it's connected um, yeah yeah so there are many reasons for why we should do it but it's about habits with people like bad habits <laughs> like with myself, <laughs> we do it tomorrow and it doesn't take long like everybody has five ten minutes right everybody has that like come on now yeah uh, that's true start little and keep going from there and I mean yeah. also reading like reading is so beneficial oh, I couldn't I believe it. it I posted on Instagram the other day when I found this research that if you read 30 minutes per day then you will live I don't know how many years now, but a few years longer than those people that don't read 30 minutes a day. I didn't know that. Isn't that crazy? I only read some that is crazy. Sometimes I read longer than other days. Sometimes I'm like only a few pages. And I think that's better than nothing. But yeah, that is, wow. Exactly. That is a big reason. Yeah, yeah. To read. Yeah. So great. Uh, live two years longer. Time. That's crazy. <laughs> two years longer. What? Yeah, that is crazy. I love those research. That's like a big why to why you should do things, right? Yeah, uh, just take the time for you. It's so, like, honestly. For our listeners, Grace, with yoga, like, I know you're a yoga teacher, so you're on a high level. But for beginners or for people who are practicing, like, um, yeah, anything yeah anything you want to say like share with our listeners on yoga yeah I mean the great thing is with yoga and our you know technology of today is that you can access any yoga class you want on YouTube and it's for free that's how I yeah. started you know and I think a lot of people start that way I mean who yeah. doesn't so like you can literally just put in five or ten minutes of yoga and just see how you feel but honestly I have to say with all of this with the habits with the you know treating yourself good and putting yourself first and da 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 there's a lot of pressure around it like and I understand because our society really just like is there to tell us that we're not we can't do all of that we're really like you know in this rat race but like the like you said before I think the moment that you kind of just step out that comfort zone step out the zone that you're like I've always been in and you just look around you look up at the sky look at nature look within yeah. you for peace mm -hmm. you start to notice that it's actually quite easy to access peace when you become 
more integrated in your own life and make your own decisions so like with yoga yeah okay you could do it tomorrow you can do it whenever it's like my best friend she's always like oh but I feel so much pressure around it and da, da, da. how can I do sport how can I just integrate something you know I'm already like n20s it's too late and there's always like so much I feel from really so much pressure it's right up. it's yeah, yeah that's true it's never too late and um honestly yeah yeah, yeah. Just try it out and be free in your body. And I think that is one of, that is really the, my favorite thing in yoga, listening to my body, what it needs in that moment. You know, I maybe do a power yoga if I'm not on my period because I need the energy. But if I'm on my period, then I'll just like do some yin yoga and take it slow and really like tune in, close my eyes, breathe with my body, notice where my tension lies. Like who, do we do that these days? No. Like we're just like, oh, we've got sore backs because we've been sat down for like hours of the do day. It, but I, I, I actually do it. And I actually do more yoga now as mentioned the period. I was like, oh yeah, I do more yoga when I have my period actually. That's ah, interesting. It's not really funny because I, I do want to do some calming uh, techniques when I have my period because I'm in pain, like physical pain. Um, yeah. So that makes sense, yeah. right? Then strength training is, uh, I do it like a lower level when I'm in my yeah. period because I kind of go tough when I'm already in pain. So yeah. I do change up some of my routine during my period, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I tend to take it slower, but like that's the thing. Like I feel like you, everyone's individual. Like you have to find yeah. your flow. And that's the great thing about yoga find your flow, find what suits you. And yeah. don't pressure yourself to do a vinyasa or an ashtanga yoga. They're like crazy. Go with. <laughs> <laughs> I find all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but then you'll start to know the benefits very suddenly, I would say. I mean, if you allow yourself and if you're ready for something, I feel like you're always going to find the benefits, right? It's the state of mind that yeah. you're in. Absolutely. It's it really about the state of mind, I would say. And um, yeah, so I have to get back to it. I think the universe wants me to. <laughs> so. I feel it, girl. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. Yeah, it's been nearly 20 years, but I do it here and there. But I was like doing it like I was in a good routine and I felt amazing. So I think this is the next level for me. Definitely. You amazing. you inspired me, Grace. You did. <laughs> so, I'm glad. So, <laughs> listeners find you if they want to get in contact with you or want to buy your book. Uh, where can they find you? Yes, yeah, so I'm on Instagram's Gracie Grossman, where I just share kind of like daily tips on how to find peace in life. And my uh, uh, paperback book is also available on Amazon, as well as my other ebook. Um, and yeah, I'm always there to spread the peace and to let people know that it's never too late, like you said, and to take control or not take control. <laughs> and I know what release mean, I know. the control <laughs> yeah, I know what and is. find yeah. the peace <laughs> yeah yeah this is something i see many of my clients struggling with is the whole control letting control. go control yeah that's why i just thought like no not the control <laughs> because that's yeah. basically yeah our work also something i and struggle it. with and since i let go it's like wow like everything just started to flow like like I was putting That's so much pressure one. on myself. Yeah. Like yeah. I was doing it to myself. Like why? Uh, maybe because of my upbringing, like Asian upbringing was very tough. And, you know, it's like you have to excel at this and that. Rah, rah, rah. So I was like yeah. a perfectionist, and, like control freak. And yeah, people pleaser, like all of those things. But once I let go of it and I'm like, I don't care anymore. Like I don't want to do this anymore. And it's like something happened like everything got easier for me and I was making everything difficult for me um so it's a mindset basically yeah yeah so. the moment you let go you find your flow it's true yeah and peace and mental peace right yeah, I was holding my show sure. yeah and yoga every time I do it it's like my soul gets peace it's like I'm I'm so relaxed I sleep better like yeah and it's proven scientifically you sleep better so it, it's no wonder that I do that right and I'm always like I'm gonna do it again tomorrow but then bad habits kicks in right <laughs> yeah. but I like that you say this and that you're so honest and vulnerable you know as you as this person because we are all only human and I think that is human. what it's all about forgiving yourself like I think that's yeah. a really big part of it the whole time forgiving yourself for not doing the things that you want to do all the time and knowing that tomorrow is a new day 
you know, like I've been off work now for two days and I've literally just been in debt bed right now is the first time I'm up sitting with you and talking like and sometimes I'm like there in pain and I'm like oh I feel guilty I should be doing something it's the should 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 oh yeah take a minute yeah take a minute and actually just do what your body is asking you to do like exactly uh, and sometimes slowing down is the best yeah yeah. yeah and when we don't do anything that is when our brain gets that reset and we get more creative actually and many yeah. people think that we have to go 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 that is not how it works um no, rest yeah. is reproductive yeah that's why my phone dies at 9 30 no notification also in the morning even though i'm up at five there's no notification until seven um because i like that's not healthy for my brain and i I do my prayer meditation and then i start work before i wake up the kids so it's like i have my routine and if that's disrupted then everything my day kind of falls apart so i need to have the same morning and evening routine where i calm myself down and do meditate and and pray and uh, I, i sometimes read as well and i need i need those routines like that's my foundation otherwise it's like my day's tough then um if yeah. something is off yeah so i know how important it is to calm yourself down um yeah, to not fall in sure. the trap i used to be in so i do a lot to like work on my mindset and i tell my clients as well like i'm helping you but i'm also helping myself in the process and i'm also learning yeah. from you in the process because i'm just as human as you learning. Know, like, yeah yeah it's yeah. not like i'm perfect i don't want to give that impression because i'm not i'm just like everyone else you know on my journey um yeah just like you are great shared with us like you went through all of this pain and then you created something beautiful out of that pain two beautiful books and you helped so many people you still are and something good came out of it you know um yeah so it's really about how do we use our pain to help others to give out more and help and help ourselves in the process you know um i yeah. think that's beautiful thank you thank you so for nice your yeah thank you for your time and i think it's amazing what you're doing and just keep rocking yoga queen (laughs) oh you too (laughs) neuroscience queen (laughs) (laughs) so you guys i'll see you the next episode i will tag grace um so you can get access to her and we'll do collaborate as well and yeah so it's gonna come on my youtube channel and be uploaded to spotify and apple as well So thank you for your time. See you in the next episode. Thank you, Grace. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.